why don't I nip round to the cabin and ask Rita if she wants to come round for a tea and then, well, at least we can talk about it. We can see what Rita thinks and I've got some nice liver. Sally, forget the garage. Oh, you don't get chances like this all the time. You get chances every single day of the week to chuck money away. Well, don't you want to make something of yourself? Oh, well, I'm a now, a now. Because that's the guy you married, Sal, and now... That's the guy the kids have got for a dad, and now... I never said I was going to be a tycoon, so you can't say you were misled. Oh, go on, make me feel bad just because I... Because I want something more than... Well, we're just stuck in nowhere. I am, that's how I feel. We're just stuck. Sally, the garage won't pay. Mike Baldwin makes it pay. I have no ambitions to be the next Mike Baldwin. You've got no ambition at all. Yeah, so you've told me. Other people do things, Kev. Why not us? Well, forget him raising cash for his new business. He's selling that garage because he knows before long he's got to start shelling out. And he knows that because it's me who's selling him. <sighs> I'm going to the Rovers for my dinner, then I'm going watching Counter. Kevin. Here we go. Nice cup of tea. Dad. Oh, come on. Cheer up. It's supposed to be a holiday. Yeah, I'm all right. Is it, um... But of course it is, I mean... She's gonna have to go home to her mother sometime. It's not fair on Maud apart from anything. I know, I know. At least you've got the excuse of spending the evening in the pub, which we said you wouldn't do. Oh. Look, I'll tell you what. Listen, I promise I'll try and get her home to her mother's today. Promise, honest. Yeah. OK. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Sorry. No, of course you're not. Have you had a good sleep, then? It's the first I've had. Well, that's good. Do you want some breakfast? Um, no, I was just wondering if you wouldn't mind if I could borrow your conditioner in the bathroom. Of course you can. I didn't like to use it, you know, without asking. Thanks. I'll tell you what, Maureen, when you've done, I'll come and help you titivate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, looks like she's ready to face the world again. Mavis, if God had intended us to grow his own vegetables, why are there two perfectly good greengrocers on Rosamond Street? Oh, but fresh vegetables, Rita, straight from the garden or the allotment. There's just no comparison. No comparison for quantity, I'll grant you. <laughs> quantity? It's quality I'm talking about. Well, all I know is that Ted put two rows of lettuces down and they all come up at once. He were mowed out with lettuce. Yeah, you have to stack them as you put them in and then they just keep coming instead of all at once. Oh, he did all that. Nobody explained it to lettuce. <laughs> Anyway, you wait and see. Hmm. Hello, Sally. Hello. What can I do for you? I was just wondering if you were doing out tonight. Ah, somebody wants a babysitter. Where are you going? No, we're stopping in. We just thought it'd be very nice to have your company. Oh, well, I'm out on. I was keeping my diary free for somebody, but I've not heard from him, so... <laughs> Who is that, can I ask? Sean Connery. I think he must be tied up. <laughs> well, come and have your tea with us, then. <laughs> right. Ah. Is there any special reason for this? No. Just be nice. Ah, thank you. Well, uh, see you what time? Oh, just come round when you're ready. All right, see then. You later. Bye. Bye. The fence is mended there, then. I like to think so. So, what do you do now with this allotment of yours? Oh, well, we're going up there today and Derek's going to test the pH. I knew I shouldn't have asked. You've no idea what that is, have you? And don't tell me. I want it all to be a beautiful mystery. You have no feeling for the soil at all, have you, Rita? Too much, love. Just reminds me of wooden boxes with brass handle. The reason being, you see, is that... Oh, thank you. Is that... Well, I asked myself. I really did. I really asked. And I thought... In the end, I thought... No. No. I wouldn't take him back. That was it. Got a good night's sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Even if he came crawling, oh. wouldn't you? He took too many things out of the door that he can't bring back. Neither him nor anybody else crawling or standing. Even so, you can hurt and hurt and hurt, but if you've loved somebody, they can sort of worm the way, can't they? That's the tragedy of it, really. You know, I suppose in a way, Raquel, it, it's like being an alcoholic. You know, you know when you've got a weakness or something and you think, right, well, I'll have nothing to do with this. 
nothing. That's finished. See, and it gives you hope, doesn't it, for starting again? You're good at this, you know. Well, oh, the... yeah. Well, I've had a bit of training basics huh. when I was going to be a supermodel. Any road, I think you're very right. When he comes crawling, because he will, you kick him right back in the ditch. I mean, you're an attractive woman. Oh. You are, and you've personality and you're lively. Even if I believed you. Well, it's true. It isn't enough, though, is it? It is. And if it's not enough for him, well, he's balmy. And between me and you, I always thought it was. Oh. Oh, I do wish I had hair like you, any road, I do. Do you know, mine's nothing but split ends. Hey, somebody said they're not having lottery this week. Oh, I didn't know that. Who mm -hmm. said? Percy Sugden. He says it's because we are being Easter and all Archbishop's going on about it, you know. No, I don't know. Don't interest me. Oh, do you do lottery? Oh, he's not a gambler, him. I work too hard for me money. Oh, so would I if anybody would let me. But there's no jobs. Baldwin's taking on, innit? Baldwin? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Oh, he's taking on machinists. <laughs> See Baldwin taking me on? What oh, grief I've given him. And I have, I'm glad to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's no harm in asking. What, and give him the pleasure of spitting in my eye? <laughs> no way. So you don't, you don't reckon that it's right then about lottery? Well, they was queuing up at the machine in the filling station and it were taking the money. So. All right, great. <laughs> You're not a gambler, are you? Half a bar on a game of dominoes, that's it. Yeah, but it wouldn't be that much of a gamble, would it? You know, the garage. Look, if you're interested, why don't you borrow the money, go and see Baldwin, be my boss? <sighs> you're kidding. You won't want to time yourself down. Well, there you go, see? Hey, you said they were having lottery this week. That's correct, yes. Well, it's not correct at all. They are so having lottery. All the same, you were correcting what you just said. Stop going around the answers. You. What do you want to go and say it for if it wasn't true? I told you for your own good. Me own good? Oh. Yes. Oh, so you've got some God-given right, have you? Tell other folk what's good for them. You shouldn't be doing lottery at all the way you're fixed. Why shouldn't I? You can't afford to be doing that nonsense when you're on benefit. But if I wouldn't lottery, I wouldn't be on benefit, would I? No. Nah. Look, the way that's worked out, it's all worked out so you've got so much money for your food, for your eating, for your rent. It's all worked out properly, is that? They don't make any allowances for giving money to millionaires or chipping in for them that's going to be. Ah, oh, so because I'm on benefit, I'm not allowed any pleasure, is that it? What pleasure is there in it? The pleasure as makes life worth living. Hope. Not hope at all, it's a delusion. But somebody's got to win. Yes, and millions lose by it. And one of them's that lad of yours. Hey. Money you're throwing away in that direction is money you're not using as you should be doing. I'll say no more. You better not. It's true, just the same. You agree with me, don't you? <laughs> well, I've never quite had the nerve to go around delivering the lecture, Percy. Mm. But you still agree with me? Well, it's an odd thing about the lottery, and it makes a nonsense of every political message I've heard in my life. I think. You think? Mm. I mean, what happened to the class struggle? The exploited masses, they don't want to get rid of the rich after all. They just want a ticket to join the club. Sorry, Arthur. You know, and what about all that other stuff? You know, the legitimate reward for effort, vision and hard work. What do you mean you don't go around delivering a lecture? Is there anybody serving here? Right. Take a deep breath. Start the rest of my life. Back with my mother. Well, you said the right word there, Maureen, start. It's about time you started doing lots of uh, other things, eh? I don't know how to thank you, Curly. Yeah, come on. Why you've gone to all this trouble? I don't know. And Raquel. What I'd have done without you? I've no idea. Well, thank you, anyway. Go on, your ma's waiting.
Yes, it is. Oh, I can, Mavis, I can. I have a vision of the promised land. It was nice of them, having you round there, any road. And she called to tell me how you were, and where you were. Yes. They are good, good friends. You need your friends. I must have been a bit of a pain to them, I suppose. Well, I suppose you were. But that's what makes them good friends. You've got a friend here and all, you know. I know you think you can't talk to me. I don't think I can't talk to you. I didn't want to talk to you. That's the difference. And if that's hurtful, I'm sorry. But I've been a bit hurt myself. Do you not think I feel it for you? <sighs> yes, but there's no buts. Oh, oh Mother. <laughs> this is a very big but. There's not. Oh, but there is. But. You were right. There's your but. And I never wanted to hear that. There's no pleasure in that for me, love. I don't know how you think there could be. Please, let's not go on. That's all I've got to say that's worth saying, apart from this. You've got to get on. There's times when you think the world's coming to an end, but it's not. Look at me sat here in this and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I know. You know what we ought to do? Go and open that shop. Busy ourselves. Now, what colour would you say that was? That one or that one? Uh, that one. Oh, would you? Well, it's hard to say, but yeah, I think it is more like that one. Perhaps it's the light. Almost the six, is it? Well, I'm trying to make my mind up. I think it's more, 5.5. .5. Bit on the acid side, any road. I put that down at the railway line. And the old factory they pulled down. All the sulfuric and the smoke over the years, you know. You seem to know a lot about it. Should do. Wilf Gaskell, Secretary of the Allotment Association. Oh, they said you'd find me. <laughs> Wilton's the name. That's right, Wilton. Your name has been forwarded. <laughs> it's Derek. Derek. Wilf. <laughs> and this is Mavis. How do would that be uh, Mrs. Wilton? Only I don't like to make assumptions. Oh, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Do you know, I find it impossible to make assumptions these days. You don't know where you are. We well, you younger folk, especially. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Gaskell? Mind you, we do need more young blood coming into the allotment movement. You make it sound like some old-time religion. <laughs> we, we were just saying it. It is a bit like a little bit of the promised land. I don't suppose Moses took a soil testing kit to the promised land? <laughs> I don't think Moses actually got to the promised land, Derek. Didn't he? Well, <laughs> we nearly didn't make it either. Well, you're here now. So if you don't mind, I'll just pop and I'll, uh, I'll get me tablets of stone and tell you a few of the commandments. Of course. It's my duty as the uh, secretary of the association, you understand? Mind you, number one is, thou shalt tend thy allotment. We will. It's not a marriage service, Mavis. Hey, I don't know so much about that. It's a serious commitment, is an allotment. She's where? Allotment. Mavis has got an allotment. I'm amazed you don't know. It's been a right carry-on with pair of them. Anyway, that's where she's gone. I don't see Mavis in Muck and Wellies somehow, or in, really. Muck and Wellies? Nothing. They've gone down there with some scientific whatnot to do the soil. They're going to do a PhD test. Mm -hmm. And what they're not going to produce from this allotment, it must be the size of Lincolnshire. Anyway, I had to give her the time off because she's promised me courgettes. Oh. Hello, stranger. No stranger than I used to be. I'll be the judge of that. Where have you been keeping yourself? You ought to know. You collect the rent. I'm glad you reminded me. A packet of our particulars, please. You know, there was a time 20 years ago when you couldn't throw a brick in the air in Rosamond Street without braining the first-class machinists. Where'd they all gone? Well, they were chucked out of their jobs by people like you. No, they put out work by foreign competition and cheap labour. Now, we are the cheap labour. 
economic miracle, innit? <laughs> Depends which end of the paycheck you're on. You know, I'll have to train people up. Hey, I'll probably get an easy grant for that. So, how many irons have you got in the fire? Oh, -ho, too many. So, are you selling this garage or what? I hear different things. It's on the market. If you know anyone that's interested... Oh, as if I would. I think you do. I hear young Kevin is sniffing. Is he? Look, uh, you going back to the flats. I'll give you a lift. I am, but I'd sooner walk to her very much. Now, what's hard feelings got to do with it? I can offer you a lift. And I can turn you down, same as you can turn me down. Suit yourself about the hard feelings. See you, Rita. See you, love. Don't ask me what all that is about. I know, but don't ask me. Uh, no, right. So, is young Kevin interested? I think he should buy it. He won't set the world on fire, but uh, he'll do all right. Go on. Tell me I shouldn't buy them. Go on, go on. You shouldn't be buying them oven chips. Oh, I'm not sure what it has to do with me. Buy oven chips if you want. Well, I'm on benefit, aren't I? Everybody's entitled to tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing. Why should you be any different? Has somebody upset you? Your friend Percy. Oh, I see. Telling me I shouldn't be doing lottery cheek. Percy always tells everybody what's right from you. Don't mind him. But I do mind. Anybody would think I asked to be on benefit. Ta, see you in your road. Bye. Bye. Between you and me and the gatepost, he was quite right. Hmm. But whose place is it to tell her? Well, we've put the money in the till, haven't we? So it's not us. Well, we're running a shop, not a mission. A mission. There was a mission just across this street once upon a time. And a woman who had no hesitation telling people what they should or shouldn't do. Now, we all just cough politely and say, it depends. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And to you. Go careful. Bye. You know, it was a good idea of yours, opening up. Well, it was better than stopping at home, only brooding. Well, you think you can't face people. It's not hard. You just stand there and they walk past you. Turns out you haven't got a sign over your head after all. Well, they've got their own concerns. Mm. You shouldn't have gone and locked yourself away at young Curly's. I needed to. Them still newlyweds, practically. It wasn't fair on them, then. Well, it was a good idea coming in, anyway. As he thought... As he thought what you're going to do with it. The shop, this property, there's all sorts. <sighs> I don't want to think about that at all. I don't want to even start. Stick up for yourself. Pigs and lambs and the cows. All in the same thing. Isn't that funny? Flipping oh, slaughter. Oh, Quite off the pack. Oh, well, oh, you'll have to go to the pub then. Four oh, no. nil. Oh, hello, Lisa. Hello, love. And I suppose if you'd won, you'd have to go to the pub to celebrate. Oh, well, why? See? They say women don't understand football. We do. <laughs> yeah, well, I've just been watching 11 blokes who haven't grasped that idea just yeah, yet. Well, don't tell us about it. That's what we'll let you go to the pub for. <laughs> hey, Rita, do you like liver and onions? Oh, you look at that, love. You go over and get Mavis. Why? Well, do you know, we're in this place in Italy and we couldn't make head or tail at Menu. Oh, and she sat there saying, what do you think this is? And I said, well, I don't know. I mean, it was a bit too upmarket for pizza and we didn't want to stick to spaghetti. Yeah. So I said, well, why don't you order it and find out? Which she does, being adventurous, and it comes. Well, I can't remember the Italian for it. It was, uh, what's the Italian thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of <laughs> one of them, anyway. And she sat in this restaurant and she said, Oh, Rita Luke, it's liver and onions. I didn't know we were going to be posh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, did she like it? No, as a matter of no. fact, she didn't. Oh. No. So we swapped. Yeah. It was delicious. Now, what about this garage? What about the garage? Well, I know Mike's selling it. Oh, yeah, he is. So, is that of any interest to you? Why? Has someone said it's an interest to us? Between you and me. Oh. So, is there anything you want to talk to me about? No. Oh. Well, we're not interested in buying it, if that's what you mean, huh? Rita. Did you think that's why we'd invited you round? Oh, well, I feel a fool now. Mind you, I think you ought to tell Mike. Why? Was it him who said we was? He thinks you're keen. Oh, yeah. He'd like us to be keen. Well... Perhaps you ought to be. I wouldn't know. Look, it just doesn't add up. Well, you'd know. 
Will you say that again, Lisa, please? For Sally's benefit. Hey, it's nice to see you. Let's not talk about garages. Make it even nicer. Go on, as it's easy to have one yourself. Oh, thanks very much. You'll have a box first. Well, I'll contribute the orange juice. I suppose it's a thought that counts. Uh, so, hey, what are we doing in here? I thought we were going into town. Because here people know us, love us and trust us. Are we sitting down? Thanks. You think it's been worth it, then? Worth it? Well, all the fuss and... Well... And the humiliation. Well... Yes, Mavis, I do. I mean, I, I get a great deal of pleasure out of the garden, I do. Oh, and I do. But the allotment... Oh, I know what you're going to say. Oh, do you? Yeah, you're going to say the allotment. Well, it's more like a elemental. Well, maybe I was going to say something like that. But seeing as you always know what I'm going to say, perhaps you care to finish the conversation on your own? Oh, Derek! It is a teeny bit trying, Mavis, that you always know what I'm going to say. Well, I'm sorry. It is, it's just... Oh, Derek, now look, we've had a lovely day. Don't go and spoil it. You saw who came in earlier, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I saw him all right. It would be a good idea to go over and ask him, you know, if he's thought it over. No, no. We don't want him to think we're too keen. It's no good jumping around him with your tongue hanging out. No, it's not that. I mean, you've made him an offer. He'd be perfectly in order to mention it. No, but I know, Baldwin. He knows I'm here. He just wants me to go to him. That way he thinks he'll be in the driving seat. Now, you see, you've got to think like these beggars. Let him stew. Uh, <sighs> Saw your wagon outside. I'm glad it's still there. Yeah, I thought I'd come in and have a quick word with you. Look, uh, sit down. Uh, no, you're all right, thanks. It's Well, it's just to say me and Sally's been thinking it over, you know, about the garage and everything. And Well, it's very good of you and we appreciate it, but well, it's no gold, really. I mean, not for Look, us. I wanted you in there because I like you. I wanted you in the shop, right? Well, it's much appreciated, but what's been going on in my head is, like, the money what I need spending. Yeah, and... well, remember I made you the offer, OK? Name your next kid after me because I've been so good to you. Now, go on, go and get yourself a drink. Thanks anyway. Have you? Hi, yeah. Four nil. I was there, pal. Oh, you had one thing in the mind. Give, Give the ball, ball away. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brennan and your good lady, how are you? Oh, fair enough, Ta. Tell you how I'm fixed. I'm not in love with your offer, but I'm spending a lot of money at the moment, so uh, say 45, you got yourself a deal. 45, you must be kidding. Well, I know how I feel, but I don't know how you feel. I mean, do you want to do a deal? If the price is right, yeah. Yeah, but would I be uh, hanging around for my money? Because if I'm uh, hanging around, I might as well hang around for 50, because I know I can get it. Oh, we can put our hands on the money. Don't worry about that. No mess. Then you are in the driving seat. So, uh, where are you going to meet me, eh? Uh, say a number. 42. Say 43, and I'm giving it away. <sighs> Fair enough. We've got a deal. And you have got yourself a very nice little business. <laughs> 